world in which we implement safeguards today is very different uh, to that of our founding fathers in 1957, as are the challenges we face. New technology and modern communications have made it easier to access knowledge, materials, and expertise that would have been much more restricted back then in 1957. That makes nuclear proliferation easier now. The number of nuclear facilities coming under IEA safeguards continues to grow rapidly by 12% in the past five years alone. So does the amount of nuclear material to be safeguarded. It has risen by around 14% in the period. IAEA resources are limited. Demand from member states for our services continues to grow and our budget is being squeezed. That means we must constantly find ways of working more effectively and more efficiently in all areas of our activities, including safeguards. We have developed important new instruments, such as the additional protocol, as I mentioned. We also make increasing use of modern technology, such as remote monitoring and satellite imagery. We have dramatically improved our analytical capabilities by building new safeguards laboratories outside Vienna. Safeguards implementation continues to evolve, including through what we call the state-level approach. This involves considering a state's nuclear activities and related te technical capabilities as a whole, rather than focusing only on individual facilities. This helps us uh, to keep the frequency and intensity of routine inspections for states to the minimum, minimum level necessary to draw credible safeguards conclusion. If you are interested, I can come back to this issue later. The important thing to remember is that the state level approach is implemented strictly within the scope of existing safeguards agreements. <laughs>